If you're constantly replacing the lifting slings that you're using or damaging the products that you're picking up, odds are you might be using the wrong lifting slings for that application. But today, we're gonna break down the pros and cons of each type of lifting sling. Welcome to the Lifting and Rigging channel. My name is Devin and today we're gonna to learn a bit more about the differences between each lifting sling to help give you a better understanding of what to use and when to use it. We'll start with wire rope slings and work through all seven of the primary lifting slings commonly found on a job site. First, let's talk about wire rope slings. Wire rope lifting slings are preferred for a lot of reasons and are the most common lifting sling that I see if I'm ever on a job site. They're popular in construction, automotive, oil and gas, and in general manufacturing industries where a variety of heavy loads and rugged conditions exist. They're also popular with the steel mill and forging industries where the durability is a key factor for the success of that pick. They have lower initial cost and lighter in weight than alloy chain slings. The different designs and constructions of wire rope provide strength, flexibility, abrasion resistance, fatigue resistance, and corrosion resistance. Now with braided multi-part slings, they're even more resistant to kinking than single part slings. They have an even higher flexibility, they can snug up tightly around the load in choker hitches, and can quickly regain their original shape after a lift. They can be used in vertical, choker, or basket hitches as well. And if the wire rope on sling bridles is damaged, the master links and hooks can be reused so long as the hardware wasn't damaged. So what about the key disadvantages of wire rope slings? Well, they have a low strength to weight ratio, the construction can make it difficult to inspect, especially in and around the core, misuse or abuse can cause kinking, crushing, or abrasion, resulting in structural damage and or loss of strength, it can be susceptible to internal and external corrosion, and there are trade-offs that exist between the design and the construction. A rope that is more abrasion resistant will offer less fatigue resistance and vice versa. And steel core slings should never be used in temperatures above 400 degrees Fahrenheit or below negative 40 degrees Fahrenheit. Second, let's dive into alloy chain slings. When it comes to toughness and dependability, alloy chain slings are the bulldogs of the lifting slings. They can be used to lift heavy and bulky loads on a regular basis and a repetitive basis. Their design provides strength and durability so that they can withstand impact, extreme temperatures, and exposure to chemicals and UV rays. But what are some key advantages of alloy chain slings? Their high strength, durable, and flexible designs hold up in the harshest operating environments. They're completely repairable by replacing individual chain links or link segments. The chain slings are easy to inspect, proof test, and recertify in the event that they are repaired, and they can be used at relatively high temperatures and in hazardous environments where other slings would be damaged or destroyed. They're resistant to corrosion, chemicals, and UV exposure. They're not affected by dirt, oil, or grease, and they'll elongate 15 to 20% when overloaded to give a visual indicator that they've been overloaded. And if you do run across that, you need to pull that sling from service and destroy it so nobody else can use it. So what are some key disadvantages of alloy chain slings? Well, these slings are quite a bit heavier than any other sling type, and the higher the working load limit, the heavier the chain will be. They can be more expensive than wire rope and synthetic slings, they can easily damage or crush sensitive or finished parts, and they're the most regulated of all lifting slings. Third, let's look at metal mesh slings. Metal mesh slings, commonly known as wire mesh slings, are made from a high tensile carbon alloy or stainless steel wire mesh and are used primarily in metalworking or other industries where loads that are hot, abrasive, or have a tendency to cut through softer synthetic slings. They're resistant to corrosion and are designed to last in demanding and rugged operating environments. But now let's look at some key advantages and disadvantages of metal mesh slings. So advantages of using metal mesh. Their high strength and durable design protects against corrosion, abrasion, and cutting. They can be used in metalworking in other high heat and demanding environments, and their flexible design with a wire bearing surface can firmly grip irregular loads just like a synthetic design. But what are some disadvantages? Well, if there's evidence of one broken wire, the entire sling must be removed from service, and metal mesh slings can be subjected to crushing damage as well. Next, let's go into synthetic slings. For highly finished parts or delicate equipment, it's tough to beat the flexibility, strength, support that synthetic lifting slings can provide. They can be made from nylon or polyester materials and are lightweight, easy to rig, and extremely flexible. Since there are a few different types of synthetic slings, I wanted to break down the advantages and disadvantages of synthetic slings overall, and then we'll go into the specific different types. So the advantages of using synthetic slings are that their inexpensive and lightweight design makes them attractive to almost any industry or lifting application. And since they're made from soft and flexible materials, these slings can grip and mold set irregular shaped loads. They're strong enough to lift heavy loads but will protect expensive and delicate loads from scratches and crushing. A variety of materials, construction styles, and specifications can tailor synthetic slings to almost any lifting application. But let's look at some disadvantages. 
So synthetic slings have a relatively low heat resistance and are not recommended for high heat applications. Special considerations must be made when synthetic slings are to be used in chemical applications. Nylon and polyester slings have different resistance characteristics to acidic and alkaline environments and may require a specialty coating depending on the application. Synthetic slings are not as durable as steel slings when it comes to abrasion and cut resistance. Corner protectors and edge guards should be used to protect against cuts and tears. And so now let's take a quick walk through the four types of synthetic slings to give you a better understanding of which might be the right fit for you. First, synthetic web slings. Synthetic web slings are flat belt straps made of webbing and most commonly feature either fittings or flat or twisted eyes on each end. They're the most versatile and widely used multi-purpose lifting sling on the market. They're strong, easy to rig, and among the most inexpensive of all the lifting slings. Nylon web slings aren't affected by oil and grease, and they're resistant to alkaline-based chemicals, but they should never be used in acidic atmospheres or near chemicals used as bleaching agents. Polyester web slings, however, can be used in acidic environments or near chemicals used as bleaching agents, but should never be used in alkaline environments. So depending on your working environment, make sure that you're really paying attention to whether or not you're buying a polyester or a nylon web sling. You wanna make sure that you're using the right one for that lift. They have a low heat resistance and are not to be used in environments that exceed 194 degrees Fahrenheit or below negative 40 degrees Fahrenheit. Next, synthetic round slings. Synthetic endless round slings have load-bearing fiber or core yarns that are protected by a woven outer jacket, which also protects against abrasion, dirt and grease, and UV degradation. They're strong, soft, flexible, and protect smooth or polished surfaces from scratches, dents, and crushing damage. They can be used in vertical basket or choker hitches, which are especially useful for lifting tubes and pipes. And much like the polyester web sling, these polyester round slings are suitable for acidic environments or near chemicals used as bleaching agents, but should not be used in alkaline environments. And also like web slings, round slings are more susceptible to heat damage and should not be used in environments that exceed 194 degrees Fahrenheit or below negative 40 degrees Fahrenheit. Next, synthetic twin path round slings. A number of high performance and lightweight round slings are available for industrial and heavy lifting applications. They can perform heavy lifting jobs while only weighing 10% of the total weight of a comparable steel sling. Unlike standard round slings, twin path round slings utilize two paths of K-spec load bearing fibers, which provide the rigor with two connections between the hook and the load for redundant backup protection. They're also popular with the steel mill and forging industries, where the durability is a key factor to the success of that pick. They're susceptible to heat damage and should not be used in high heat environments above 180 degrees Fahrenheit. However, you can get a specifically designed sling with high temperature core yarns and a high temperature cover that is resistant to up to 300 degrees Fahrenheit. Finally, synthetic rope slings. Although synthetic rope slings have been in use for over 60 years, the advancement in high performance fibers has recently improved the perception of using rope slings for overhead lifting applications. They're preferred in certain lifting applications in construction, shipyard, and offshore and deep water industries. Diameter to diameter, a synthetic rope sling is approximately one eighth the weight of a steel wire rope sling with similar specifications, and compared to chain slings, they offer even more significant weight savings. But they're more prone to damage from abrasion or cutting when lifting loads with sharp corners or edges. Now, you can get additional edge and abrasion protection, but that's gonna add significant cost to the sling, which might even outweigh the cost of just using a different wire rope sling. Hopefully this video was able to give you a better understanding of the different lifting slings that are available to you. And if you did find this video helpful, let us know by clicking like or subscribing to the YouTube channel or by just sharing it with a coworker who might benefit from this training as well. Using the wrong lifting sling can lead to damage to your equipment, to your facility, and most importantly, to the people that work for you. So when writing your lifting plan, make sure that you're taking time to consider all of the factors that affect your pick and then use that when deciding what lifting sling is the best suited for that lift. In addition to choosing the correct lifting sling, it's also important to know how to properly calculate the weight of a load and then factor that into your lifting plan. To assist you in that, we put together this load calculation pocket guide to use for a quick reference. And if you've never had to calculate the weight of the load before by yourself, you can click the link above and it'll take you to a video where I walk you through the different formulas and a few different examples of how to calculate the weight of a load before your next overhead lift. If you're having trouble determining what lifting sling is the best for you, or you're still having trouble figuring out what to do with your next overhead lift, don't hesitate to reach out to any of our lifting specialists here at Mozilla Companies. They'd be happy to help you however they can. For all of us at the Lifting and Rigging channel, thank you for watching.